Hello again my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another Inkscape tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you an easy, medium and hard method to adding lighting and shadows to your designs. Hello my friends, before I continue with today's video I just wanted to let you lovely people know that there is a new version of Inkscape available to download, version 1.3 and with it has come a lot of changes, new additions and tools to use including my personal favourite, the one you can see on screen right now, the Shape Builder tool. Affinity and Adobe Illustrator have had it for quite a while now, but now it is the turn of Inkscape and it is a very powerful tool, which I will be making a video on very soon. So if you want to download Inkscape version 1.3, I will leave the link in the description. Hello again my friends, today I'm going to be giving you 5 different examples on how you can incorporate shadows and lighting into your designs. The first two are easy methods that anybody can do. The second two will require you to have a basic understanding of lighting and shadows. And the fifth one is more of a professional view on light and dark aspects to your designs. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, as you can see, I have already marked out what each one does. So, this first method is simply by using what I went over in my last video, the filters. The filters are probably the easiest way that you can add effects onto your shapes. So, with the shape selected, if you come to Filter, Shadow and Glows, and then you simply select inset for example as you can see there is now a dark shadow on the top and left side and on the bottom and right there is a light shadow now you can't really see the light because it's white on white but if i was to create a simple black box and then drop that down to the bottom as you can see if i put that black box behind it you can see the difference it makes to the shadows. The second option is simply by duplicating and lowering the selection to the bottom. So it is simply a case of copying the shape, dropping it down and then offsetting it ever so slightly. Now you can do that by selecting whichever shape you want to copy and then right clicking and going to duplicate or simply using Control, Alt and D to duplicate it. Turn the shape black and then using the arrow keys you can simply go down and to the right a little bit and then come up to the toolbar at the top and this little section here that starts with raise selection to the top you're looking for lower selection one step which is this one right here. Click on that and as you can see, if I click off everything, it's cast a little shadow behind it. The next method is simply the same as the last one, but instead of offsetting it, we use a blur instead. So we go to the shape that we want to cast a shadow from and then we control Alt D or right click and select duplicate. We turn this black again but this time, instead of offsetting it, we simply drop it to the bottom using the same section that we just previously used. And then we go to our fill and stroke menu and at the bottom, we turn the blur up. And as you can see, it's already given a very nice drop effect behind it. So now that is what we refer to as, as a drop shadow. It's very simple to make and as you can see they are both completely independent of each other. Now getting slightly more difficult we are going to duplicate, difference and then use a blend mode in order to get a much better effect. But it still has its limitations. So firstly select the shape you want to 
use and then we are going to duplicate it twice so right click duplicate and this time we want to change the color as well so we can see what we're working with so i'm going to go with a normal yellow and then i'm going to duplicate that yellow shape again so Control alt delete or right click and go to duplicate we're going to change this to a darker shade so we can differentiate the two and then we are going to use the click and scroll so we can scroll down ever so slightly just like that now with this top one selected we're going to go to the other yellow one and we are going to hold shift select them both and then go to path difference now as you can see it has cut out everything apart from the yellow object that was overlapping now if we was to turn that to black as you can see it's cast quite a decent shadow but it still looks very blocked so we're going to select the black shadow and then we're going to come to the fill and stroke menu where it says blend mode select that and if we scroll down to where it says overlay it will change it ever so slightly so it looks like the other color underneath it is still coming through now if i was to move this off as you can see it's still black and this blue shape is not in any way opaque but as you go over it still allows the color that's underneath to come through and mix the two colors for the piece that you are using so when you have got through all of these options and none of them are looking as good as you want them to look what do you do well that's when you start mixing light and shadow and you start thinking about exactly where the light is coming from now for this we are going to use gradients and we are going to use light and shadows to give yourself a really good effect on a ball and a ball is the perfect object to practice on so with that said let's select the circle that we've got on our page and we are simply going to add a radial gradient to this so we're going to come to the fill and stroke menu select the radial gradient and then we are going to go down to the bottom selection of the two colors and make sure that the a bar for the opacity is turned all the way up we want this to be completely solid now you can choose your colors whatever color you choose for the top it should be the same color for the bottom only a lot darker for example if i was to do a blue color on the top just like that and let's turn the opacity up as well so we can see what we're working with i don't want the outside of the bowl to be completely black i just simply want it to be dark so if i select the same color by using the dropper tool right here and then selecting the color that we want and then come to the v bar and turn it all the way down as you can see it's no longer black but it's a very deep blue and that's the kind of look that we are looking for now as you can see it looks like the light source is coming from the front and i want it to come from the top so what we're going to do is go to the gradient tool on the left hand toolbar and then we're going to click the center circle and we're going to just bring that up near the top now as you can see it's cast a really dark shadow down here and that is exactly what we're looking for but we can go a step further we can add another light source to this so that's what we're going to do next by going back to your select tool and then right clicking and duplicating we are going to turn the new shape white and then we are going to squash it on either side left and right so by holding shift and clicking one of these arrows and dragging 
you can make it look like that. Now the next step is we want to bring the top down ever so slightly to leave a gap like this between these two areas here. And all we are going to do with this shape is add a linear gradient like so. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that the light's coming from the top to the bottom. So we can simply go back to our gradient tool and move the start point to the top and then clicking and dragging while holding control we're going to bring the end point to the bottom just like so now you can alter this after the fact but for now i'm going to go to the top color and i'm going to bring the opacity right the way down so it's barely visible and I'm going to go to the bottom color and make sure that that is set to zero. Once you have got that set, you can then use the bottom one and bring it up slightly and then just tweak about with the different values to try and get yourself to a place that you think looks good. Around there will do for me. Now, as you can see, if I scroll out, it looks like a new light has been cast from the top. Finally, all we have to do is click the main circle again and right click duplicate. And this time we are going to turn it black and then squash it down about that much. And then hold control and drag it down and maybe off to the left just a touch and then we're going to make sure that this selection is at the bottom so any overlap of shadow will end up being behind the ball and then we simply come to our fill and stroke menu and we turn the blur up we don't want the blur to be too severe so I think around there would be perfect and if it is too dark you can always take the opacity and bring it down like so and now if I click off everything to deselect it as you can see that ball looks 3D like it's floating in the air and it has got a light source and a shadow that's cast behind it so that is it my friends that is how you can go about using shadows and lighting to elevate your designs to the next level if you found this useful please let me know in the comments and if you have any questions i will be happy to answer you until next time i'm going to bid you all a fond farewell say thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one